Welcome back, guys, to the great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. The last episode, we revealed Hugh Boone's true identity as Daily Vigil, the missing husband who had been living a double life with his wife and kids, not knowing of his employment termination from Barclay Prison. However, it turned out that Daily himself didn't remember that he had been fired, as we helped him remember what took place 10 years ago, locked up in his own psyche for his own protection, causing him to faint and the trial to be adjourned for now. We return to Shomza Suite by the look of it, Wondering what we're doing next. I still can't quite believe what just happened. I know. I inquired with the bailiff after the court session was adjourned. And it seems Mr. Vigil was taken to hospital to recover. Right. Ten years ago now, Mr. Vigil attempted to commit suicide by jumping out of the window of the prison governor's office. But ever since then, he's completely blocked the memory of those events from his mind. Nobody knew his secret. Not his family. Not even the man himself. But I... I forced it out into the open. Was it wrong of me to do that? Did I overstep the mark, I wonder? Runo! Oh, Iris! You were miles away. Anyway, I brewed a fresh pot of soothing tea for you. Oh, thank you. You and Susie have had an exhausting day so far, haven't you? Oh. Thank you, Iris. How thoughtful of you. Do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is? When we came out of the courtroom back into the defendant's antechamber, he disappeared. Oh, no, I don't know. He just suddenly sprang to his feet and left. All he said was, I must leave. I wonder if he's pursuing the mystery of Inspector Gregson's death. Well, you know what Hurley's always saying, don't you? There are mysteries in this world that should perhaps never be solved. For the construction of a solution comes only at the expense of the destruction of something else. What does that mean? He knows very well that when you open someone else's old wounds, you often open up your own, too. But he just can't take his own advice and leave well alone. Solving mysteries is too important for him. That's so true. But that's what I like about Hurley, after all. I suppose that's the lot of a great detective in some ways. So then, let's have tea, and then I'll give you a hand. Oh, do you have time, Iris? Yes, I finished this month's manuscript at last, with barely a day to spare before the deadline. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it. A brand new story to read in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. You know, I always hide Hurley's violin in the days before I have a deadline. You, you do? Poor Mr. Sholmes. I'm sure that's very wise, Iris. How sensible of you. Now then, my dear fellows, let's make a plan of action before we continue our investigation. That's what we should be doing. This morning's trial. So how did it go in court this morning? Well, we still don't know the truth about what really happened, but one thing's increasingly clear. Paul Van Zeeks definitely didn't do it. Oh, goody. Yes, that's right. We managed to uncover several new facts as well. Oh, really? And there was another development too. Kazuma. Yes, it's quite clear now. The Kazuma-sama is not himself. The way he's acting, it's almost as if he's possessed. I know. I mean, at the end of the proceedings earlier, he was like a bloodhound the way he was chasing down Mr. Vigil's forgotten past. He's not normally so mercilessly persistent. What's going on in his head, I wonder? I really need to sit down with Kazuma and try to understand what he's going through. If Gregson was really murdered the day before his body was discovered, then Lord Van Zeeks has to be innocent, you see. What? The day before? Well, that should be easy enough to work out just by examining the corpse, surely? Yes, you would expect so, but curiously... No time of death was included in the autopsy report. Hmm, 
that is curious. There are still unanswered questions about Lord Van Zeeks, though, aren't there? Ah, do you mean... I mean, what was he doing there on Fresno Street that day in the first place? Well, according to the man's testimony, he said he was investigating Inspector Gregson, didn't he? And it turns out that little room was actually the inspector's secret office. Oh, that sounds like he has all the makings of a wonderfully devilish plot. But then why was that notice board in there covered in all those particular papers? Papers about cases with a link to the Reaper. I'm starting to get a bad feeling about all of this. Oh dear, that sounds more like something horribly devilish. We must start by looking into Inspector Gregson's movements of late. I never imagined I might have to be investigating an inspector's movements. Well, according to the entry in his diary, he was carrying out an incognito investigation of the Red-Headed League the day before his death. Oh, you, you mean he was doing the same as Hurley? Well, Mr. Shelms was trying to apply, whereas the inspector was supposed to be investigating. I do wish it had been the other way around. <laughs> Anyway, as it turns out, the inspector who went to investigate the Red-Headed League that day wasn't actually Gregson at all. It was Mr. Vigil, in possession of Gregson's identification. Uh, you know what that sounds like to me? Establishing an alibi. Oh my! Yes, you're absolutely right, Iris! But why would Gregson need an alibi? It would appear that the inspector had something to do that he wished to keep secret. I don't believe it. I I always thought he was just a harmless lover of fish and chips. But perhaps they were seasoned with something a little more potent than salt and vinegar. I think perhaps we should try to move away from food analogies. Well, anyway, if Lord Van Zeeks felt the need to investigate Gregson... Yes, I agree. We must try to find out what he knows. Vigil, you say? Isn't that the name of the lady who came to visit Hurley yesterday? That's right. To ask Mr. Sholmes if he would help her to find her missing husband. Only Mr. Sholmes completely passed the buck to us. Actually, didn't you say that Mr. Vigil had been taken to hospital? Do you know which one? Ah, it's St. Sinners. I'm starting to wonder if all the other hospitals in London have closed down. That's amazing, Runo. You found the lady's husband already. Well, I suppose I have, by accident. And ten years ago, while Mr. Vigil was the chief warder at the prison, he was responsible for overseeing the professor's incarceration. No! So when the convict escaped, he was held responsible and immediately dismissed. Ah, <sighs> sometimes I really don't want to grow up. There's more. For ten years after that... While he was ostensibly working as a peddler, he also had another secret job. While he was paid by Gregson to be a stand-in to impersonate the inspector. To impersonate Gregsy? But, but why? I have absolutely no idea. Ah, Guinea was right. I'm starting to think all adults are up to no good now. Including you, Runo. I haven't paid anyone to impersonate me. That means he has ties to the professor and to Inspector Gregson, though. So I do think we ought to pay a visit to Mr. Vigil, don't you? Back to St. Sinners, then. Well, I think it's clear what we need to do, isn't it? Let us investigate, my dear fellows. Oh, Iris! You're even more enthusiastic than usual today. If anyone has anything to hide, my special Wilson shooting iron will soon set them straight. That's water pistol. It's stuff full of piping hot extra special blender mine. Then I'm quite sure it'll be very effective. I'd better be careful not to hide anything. Well, it feels a little strange that Mr. Sholmes is nowhere to be seen, but still. Let's go and see what we can find out. Yes. What are we going to find out, eh, guys? <laughs> Should we move down the list? Oh, some of it's grayed out, in fact. Anything going on in my office? There actually is.
Or not really. It's just conversing about what to do. Are you alright, Mr. Nalahudo? It's rather unusual to find ourselves here in the middle of the, our investigations. It's, it's just occurred to me that I might have forgotten something when we left this morning. Please don't worry. As long as you continue to investigate thoroughly, you won't go far wrong. Oh, yes, of course. I must get back to work as soon as possible. Sorry! I just wanted to check it out. Kazuma. What are you conversing about? No arguments, Prosecutor Asogi. You will continue with the trial exactly as I instructed. Is that clear? Perfectly. It's Kazuma-sama. Defying Lord Strongheart by the sound of it. He never did know when to back down. On your way now, Asogi. My lord. Kazuma. He left without saying a word. Yes, what are you doing here? Oh, um, well, um, I was just hoping to ask you a few questions, if you wouldn't mind. I wanted Van Zeke's trial concluded today. But Prosecutor Asugi's unwelcome inquiries are going to make it take longer than necessary. Unwelcome inquiries. As a result, I'm losing even more precious time. Currently 2 hours, 55 minutes and 41 seconds. 42, 43... And we must resolve everything before 3 hours have passed, Mr. Nalahodo. In a miraculous not even 5 minutes. Anyway, I can't let the man's obvious bad mood put me off. I need information. So we can converse with you, can we? Does Prosecutor Asogi believe that Lord Van Zeeks is the Reaper? I wouldn't know. It was ten years ago, in that fateful close trial, that Lord Van Zeeks made a name for himself among the judiciary. But the next trial he fought, he lost. It meant the ringleader of a criminal organization was acquitted, thanks to all the jurors being under duress. But that's awful! The man's freedom was short-lived. He lasted just three days. Yes, let me see. He died in a rock slide at his place of work, I believe. Correct. That was the inauguration of the Reaper of the Bailey. And people believed Lord Van Zeeks was responsible. He was brought to trial himself, but it was shown to have been an accident. So he must have had a solid alibi then. And nevertheless, the mysterious deaths continued. In total, 16 persons perished in unusual circumstances, ostensibly at the hand of the Reaper. That's a long run of coincidences. Well, the Reaper's true identity may well be revealed by this trial. And the impact that revelation would have on the British public cannot be understated. Is that why it's a closed trial? Precisely. This country hasn't seen a closed trial for 10 years. So the last one was the Professor's, the trial of Genshin Asagi. Correct. Actually, we heard that originally you were going to prosecute that trial yourself, Lord Strongheart. Van Zeeks entreated me to relinquish the prosecution to him, that he might avenge his brother's death. And here we are, ten years later. With the son of the man Van Zeeks had condemned now looking to avenge his father's death in the same way. They do say that what goes around comes around. However, it would seem that the new young prosecutor is harboring some ulterior motive as well. Kazma is. I like my organization to run smoothly in the exact manner that I prescribe. As with the giant clock in here, I won't tolerate a single cog being out of step with the others. Ah, so that's what all these gears are about in here. I mean, it's a clock too. If the young man refuses to mesh with the other parts of my great machine, I will be forced to take steps. What? What do you mean? Not something with which you need concern yourself. 
In any case, all your questions will be answered tomorrow. I'm too menacing. Now I shall have to ask you to excuse me. As of this moment, I've been delayed from attending my next meeting by precisely three hours. Oh my, that is a long time! And I hold you entirely responsible. Even though we miraculously managed to fit everything into not even five minutes. Um, I wonder if you might agree to us, uh, talking with Prosecutor Asagi. Discussions between the defense and the prosecution outside the courtroom are generally frowned upon. However, I will make an exception in this case. Now go. You can find him in his office. Oh, thank you. He's got an office. Let's go to see him at once. Listen, Nalahodo. Kazuma's my best friend in the world, but I'm really not at all sure I know how to talk to him at the moment. All right, new location has been added for sure, but it's way down the list. Way, way, way down the list. That's not how we visit things. Let's go to the prison. Second November, at the local prison cell one. Lord Van Seeks is reading. Look. He doesn't seem like he wants visitors, does he? But he must have noticed that we're here, surely. What do you Nipponese want? That's no way to greet the lawyer who's trying his hardest to prove your innocence, is it? Perhaps not. Hmm? I apologize. So what can I do for you, Mr. Nalahodo? Oh, Van Zeeks, speaking earnestly. Oh, the fog will lift over London for the first time in months tomorrow. This does feel very, very strange. I must say, I was impressed. Oh, well, thank you. Not by you, by your fellow Nipponese, your prosecutor friend. Oh, I see, yes. It's sardonic, don't you think? For a man such as me, so loathing of the Nipponese, to be entirely at the mercy of the two of you. I suppose... It's retribution for having played the part of the Reaper all these years. Played the part? Looks like he's gonna tell us some stuff. You once told me that you gladly allowed people to believe you were the Reaper, because it helped reduce the amount of serious crime that took place in London. If keeping quiet and playing the part benefits the cause, I cause I myself am committed to pursuing, then why would I choose to say anything? But the henchman of a criminal killed by the Reaper attacked you only the other day, and that was just the most recent of many attempts on your life, wasn't it? Someone is clearly profiting from your silence about all of this. Someone is using you. Believe me, ever since the Reaper first appeared, I've been doing my utmost to expose him. Or rather, expose the organization. Ah! It's a whole organization! It's inconceivable that all of those accidents were orchestrated by one man. No, the Reaper always appears to have been very accurate information, or have had very accurate information, about the accused in each case. Which can only mean... But somebody at Scotland Yard is involved. Someone at... You... You can't mean... It's taken me many years, but I finally identified the central figure in this Reaper organization. Tobias Gregson. No. No! Gregson. The Reaper. So, the reason you were investigating Inspector Gregson is because you intended to expose him as the Reaper. As I said, the Reaper of the Bailey is no single person. 
It's a highly secret organization with close ties to Scotland Yard. But there's no doubt that Gregson was a key member of that organization. I... I don't believe it! Are you saying that Gregson, that he was behind all of those awful criminals meeting there? Gregson didn't do the dirty work himself. Oh! He was the tactician. His job was to covertly investigate the marks and plot their assassinations. In order to do that without arousing suspicion, he regularly needed a firm alibi. Which is where Mr. Vigil came in, posing as the inspector. Vigil knows nothing of the Reaper. But the room he rents on Fresno Street was almost certainly the headquarters of the operation. Gregson would have met the assassin there for briefings. So we don't actually know who carried out the killings then. Actually, I do have a name. You... What? Well, if you can name the man, you have the true identity of the Reaper already then. Or, if I can name the woman. Oh. She's a young woman by the name of Asa Shin. Wait, what? Shin! Miss Asa Shin. The true name of a terrifying killer I know only too well. She came to Japan posing as a visiting student and murdered Dr. John H. Wilson. Then, she just went it just when it seemed that diplomatic protection would help her escape Japan and conviction. She was assassinated. <laughs> the mysterious woman was herself murdered in a small summer beach hut. And that woman was actually the Reaper of the Bailey. Mr. Nalahodo, this perhaps isn't the place to discuss... No, no, of course not. We can't mention it here. The fact that she killed Dr. John H. Wilson. Because Iris doesn't know, and it's very likely that the man was her father. Asashin. I should let father know at once. Yes, I agree. Kazuma, isn't it? Kazuma Asogi. You say he's a friend of yours. My best friend. He's the whole reason I got to come to Britain. It was all on his merits. I have nothing but respect for him. Yes, I understand that only the very best students are selected for such opportunities. And I had a fine demonstration of how sharp he is in the proceedings earlier today. He missed nothing. In fact, his flawless performance very much reminded me of his father. Genshin Asuki, the professor. It's true that the aristocracy at the time was the root of numerous grave societal problems. They were abusing their power, playing with the common man as pawns in politics, in economics, in war. What's changed? In many ways, Asugi was carving out a canker from society that we British couldn't deal with ourselves. Uh, I... I see. That's precisely why it makes no sense. Clint Van Zeeks was a noble and upstanding man. He wasn't corrupt. Why did that damn Nipponese have to go and take my brother's life? In spite of having once saved mine. He saved your life? How did that happen? It was ten years ago, on a foggy night. What was to be the professor's final strike had sent a wave of panic through the capital. So Clint Van Zeeks has already been killed at this point, then. Genshin and I were walking down some back streets at a late hour. Of course, at that point, I had no idea of the true nature of the man at my side. All of a sudden... Don't make a peep! You're coming with us! We were surrounded. All of our assailants were armed with pistols, their faces obscured by scarves. Tint was not only from noble heritage, he was a brilliant prosecutor as well. The scum of London hated the sight of him, and they had no sympathy for his younger brother either. I've been targeted several times before already. Yeah, it's Van Zeke's alright. Got him! I could hear them murmuring amongst themselves. I knew they were after me. 
Just when I thought my time had come. If I let them kill you, Klim would never forgive me. It was Asagi's voice. Just a whisper in my ear. After that, I don't remember exactly what happened. The next thing I knew, there was silence all around. Genshin lay on the cobbled street. Blood was seeping from his left hand. He shielded me. Two days later, they arrested him. On suspicion of being London's most notorious mass murder ever. The Professor. How awful for you. All at once, I lost the brother I revered, and the foreign friend I held in such high regard. I'm so sorry, Lord Van Zeeks. That's the end of my miserable tale. I never thought I'd recount it to anyone. Well, thank you for confiding in me. The Professor, the Reaper, and Inspector Gregson. I wonder just how intimately related they all are. I still can't quite believe that Gregson was essentially the Reaper. Giving assassination orders to Giselle Brett. Assassin. Mr. Nalahodo, let's go and inform my father. I'm sure our government will want to hear about this new information. Oh, that means I get to meet your daddy, Susie. Hooray! Yes, all right. Let's head back to the Great Waterloo Hotel then. See ya. I've been given my moving orders. I can't stay with you anymore. Go back to reading your book. And that's higher on the list, so let's go. The 2nd of November, we head to the Great Waterloo... Waterloo? Oh yes, Waterloo is very posh. It very is. Waterloo Hotel Foyer. I fought it yesterday and I think it again today. This place is so princely. It's a wild guess, but I have a feeling you'll think the same tomorrow, too. My tea is a finer fragrance than whatever they're serving in the tea room here, though. Wouldn't you say? Ah, look what we have here. This is an unexpected pleasure. Ah, father. Oh, is this your daddy, Susie? How lovely. What a charming young lady. And you are? Ah, really? So you're the author of The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, are you? That's me, Iris Wilson. At your service, sir. Susie's been such a wonderful friend to me over the last year, you know. Well, Miss Wilson. I must say I read your work regularly and with much interest. Iris actually lives with Mr. Sholmes, you know, father. Is that so? Well, perhaps that goes some way to explaining that bright look in your eyes. I mean, so do we. <laughs> you wouldn't be smiling so airily if you knew just how bright she is, believe me. Now then, young Nalohodo, it was a pleasure seeing you in action earlier. As an invitee of the symposium, I was allowed to observe from the gallery after I twisted some arms. And I must say, it was a truly exemplary performance. Oh, well, thank you very much. Although I'm fairly sure you omitted by Kazuma on the end there. No, 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 no. Please don't misunderstand. It was you who impressed me. Really? Mind reading. You didn't miss a step against Asugi, and we all know how capable he is. Really, to have matured into such a fine defense lawyer in less than a year is quite extraordinary. It's very kind of you to say so. And really nice to hear. What I saw in court today confirmed what I'd been hoping for. The favor I mentioned yesterday, Nalahodo. I trust you haven't forgotten. Oh, no, you, you did mention something, didn't you? But first... We have something to report, father. Of course, of course. Shall we take tea while we discuss matters further? Yes, we should take tea while we discuss matters further. However, matters might take an interesting term at this point in time. And we know that an episode is very shortly coming to its timeout period. So we will cut off our discussion here and resume next time.
on the great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve, where we relay the news we've just found out and see how Mr. Mikotoba, Eugene, see how he responds. I'll see you guys next time for that. Bye-bye.